Hello, uh, this is Robert Rickover. I'm an Alexander Technique teacher in Omaha, Nebraska. And my guest today is Imogen Ragone, an Alexander Technique teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. And we're going to have a two, we're going to have, we're going to do, record two podcasts today. This will be the part one uh, on the topic of Alexander's term psychophysical. It's a term that he coined. Uh, typically, if like if you're doing a search of his books, PDF search, it'll be hyphenated, psycho-physical. And it's, it pops up a lot in his books. And I, I, I think it's worth talking a little bit about um, and what some of the implications of that are. Um, so uh, Imogen has asked me to give a very short description of the Alexander Technique, because although I think the, these podcasts are mainly for teachers and students of the work, I think people outside the work might get something out of this too. So just to say what it, what the Alexander Technique is and who F. Matthias Alexander was, um, the Alexander Technique could be defined as a way of learning how to use yourself use your physical mechanism um, and your mental mechanism, as it were, in on the surface of this planet where we exist and certain forces are acting on us and we have a, a structure and all, and how we utilize that structure and those forces for our benefit. And the, it was founded by a guy named F. Matthias Alexander. Do you want to add anything to that definition? It's a it's a sparse one. Well, I mean, there's so much that you could say. There's a lot more. Not that say, could, um, yeah. but yes, you could say very simply, it's a it's a body mind or mind body method for helping you move and be in this world with more ease and presence and um, comfort and uh, yes and comfort comfort yeah. yeah so i'm going to start by reading a little something from the great man himself f matthias alexander and i'm uh this comes from his second book constructive Co conscious control of the individual i think that's the full name it came out in the mid 20s 1920s uh, and he says, he writes, the term psychophysical is used both here in, in this book and throughout my works to indicate the impossibility of separating, quote, physical, unquote, and, quote, mental, unquote, operations in our conception of the working of the human organism. And then he goes on to say, as I wrote in his first book, Man's Supreme Inheritance, he refers back to that, and that book dates from, I guess, the late teens, 1918, 19, somewhere in there. In my opinion, the two that, uh, meaning psycho and physical, must be considered entirely interdependent and even more closely knit than is implied by such a phrase. Pretty strong statement at a time when people were not thinking in terms of mind-body unity or it wasn't out there very much. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he's bringing, writing this in that second book, Constructive Conscious Control, is that uh, he's, he's, he's concerned with the problem of not having good words to describe what he's writing about. Well, yeah. It's a big problem. And he does go on to say, and, and, that I'm forced to use the words physical and mental here 
and throughout my argument because there are no other words at present which adequately express uh, the functions of psychophysical activity. Uh, he, he's, he's got a problem in that there's no good language he has available to make his points. And he, he does say some other things here that are, might be worth another podcast down the road, but I want to I don't want to get too deep in the woods here, but this is his basic yeah. thing. They are mind and body, body and mind are interrelated in ways that are just beyond mind, body. Unity. It's more than related. They're it's more than related. It's they're really the same. It's the same thing. thing, but described from different points of view, you might say. Yeah, Something I know like in, in, in my classes I'll often start off and talking about because it's often people talk about the mind body connection yeah and so I try and then make it we do some explorations to go to mind body unity but we're still using these words of separation I'm not saying which is a more modern way of saying psychophysical right mind right. body um right um, I, I it is a problem and you reminded me of a book we read recently in my book group called Bodyfulness mm -hmm. and the author of the book um I can't remember her name right now uh, kind of coined this term because she felt mindfulness was missing the point it had separated from the body but right. she made the point that the brain is part of the body the heart is part of you know sure. it's, a, it's an organ within our body and our nervous system is within our body so why is that separate from the body so I, mean, I feel like that's kind of into that connects with what we're talking about today and that she did coin her own phrase coming from a very different well mm. somewhat different point of view but and what was her phrase again bodyfulness rather than she body was like fullness. challenging mindfulness oh body bodyfulness yeah but again she has two separate phrases and it almost seems like well no she was oh, she, she, was, she was trying to do away with mindfulness because that is part of okay bodyfulness because the mind the brain is yeah. part of the whole of how we function mm -hmm. so yeah so i mean to me a key phrase in his statement here is that they're even more closely knit that is than is implied by such a phrase it's beyond yeah. him to come up with a phrase that will really yeah accurate, i think accurate. it, he it doesn't, is really it, challenging because any words language we use is language of parts and separation yeah exactly exactly yeah. so this is his dilemma mm -hmm. and I, I i'm i have a renewed interest in this because of listening to a podcast i did with john macy a few mm. years ago he's a alexander technique teacher he's retired now but in omaha and also a physical therapist and he pointed out that, and I never really thought of this before, that if you're going to talk about psychophysical unity or whatever it is, then there's also going to be physical psycho unity. It goes in both directions. Mm -hmm. Now, the term physical psycho as a description of Alexander what Alexander teachers are doing is a little iffy. A little uh, cumbersome. I also want to say, I, I, I mean, I, we'll talk more about direction, but there's only a direction because we're thinking of the thing separately. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was the whole together, yeah. there wouldn't be a direction. It would be all, all at once. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot to unpack here and I don't think we're going to have time to unpack all of it by any means um but uh one of the things 
Well, so in terms of the term physical psycho, maybe not a great phrase. You know, might people might think we're we're a psycho. <laughs> Um, but the other term, the more common term today is mind-body, mind-body unity, mind-body integration, whatever, which again, doesn't really capture it, but body-mind is a perfectly reasonable phrase. And you do hear that sometimes, though. I think it's more common uh, as mind-body, yeah. And um, so... What I'm so what John suggested or, or brought out was that my if you use the term mind body or psychophysical and 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 my, mind body integration psychophysical these are all ideas that most I'd say most Alexander teachers would subscribe to they might have different ideas about what it means. But I would say for a lot of us, it's really at the heart of the technique, even, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Aspect of this work that everything is interconnected within us. Mm -hmm. um, so if, say, body mind is uh, implied by mind body, right? In other words, it can go both ways. Um, the question is, well, just back up for a second. In general, okay, most Alexander teachers would agree with what we talked said so far, but I would say the Alexander technique in general tends to be more focused on the direction mind body. So you have things like alexander technique directions or self directions so they are thoughts that you might use to affect your physical mechanism the functioning of your physical me mechanism and yeah i'm thinking of a traditional hands-on alexander technique yeah. lesson mm -hmm. one might say that it's more going the other direction Especially if the teacher's not talking much, uh, yeah. using their hands to guide you, which is a mm -hmm. part of a lot of mm -hmm. our in-person teaching. And that can definitely change your state of mind and the kind of thoughts you'll be having when you're in a more right. easeful, present state of being. <laughs> and I think, I think most Teachers would say, okay, it's great. I'm great. I'm using my hands, but at some point, it's yeah. going to be a good idea if the student starts to be able to do it for themselves. And that's mainly going to be a, a mind using their thinking to affect. Yeah. Them. And it's what you can do on your own away from on your teacher. Your right. um, I also want to just say that a lot of teachers myself included it would be hands on work when I'm working that way and uh directions constructive thinking right. and I would I would be hopefully right. <laughs> mostly teaching that kind of simultaneously so. but it, you know if, if the Alexander technique tends to emphasize a person's utilizing their thinking process to change the functioning of mm -hmm. themselves that puts it in fairly stark contrast to most many i uh, wouldn't want to say all but many other systems of mm -hmm. <clears throat> that are designed to help you do things more easily designed mm -hmm. to have very much the same goals as the alexander mm -hmm. technique would have and and to take a near neighbor near is nearish neighbor um feldenkrais method um which is also i would say very much a mind body or body mind process their main way of bringing about changes is to guide you into physical positions or uh coordinations that are perhaps very unfamiliar to you and 
give yeah, you. Yeah, they have a movement sequences, don't they? Um, movement sequence. I think. <laughs> yeah, Falcon Price has like a hands-on component that I don't know. It's not talked about a lot. But the main thing, the thing that the most Feldenkrais teachers, I think, will say is the powerful stuff uh, is someone talking you through and possibly helping you move, um, but mainly talking you or a group of people or using, a, 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 well, in the, in the day, a cassette tape or, you know, uh, an, an audio, <laughs> audio recording that you just follow along and they will generally say that's the most powerful that's the ultimate powerful thing in the film i'm reminded of dart work within the alexander um yeah, uh, yeah where that you take you through kind of developmental sequence and it affects your use of yourself <laughs> right oh okay yeah i hadn't thought about dart but there mm -hmm. that definitely is an example mm -hmm. dart was a, a scientist in south africa who um had lessons his teacher left there were no there was no one left in south africa for africa to teach him this would have been in the 40s maybe and he came up with a series of movements that sort of emulated how how we go from being a baby crawling on the floor to going upright that kind of thing yeah, yeah. And that's there are teachers who who really like to use those procedures mm -hmm. and they are yeah they're they're you're doing something physical mainly in in, in a mindful way but you yeah, could say the phys we're separating again but the mm -hmm. physical part of that is kind of the the key part, key part. yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very challenging to talk about actually it because is. of the we don't have um, good words either Alexander mm -hmm. didn't have them and we still don't have them um yeah and I want to just say one more thing about uh the, those the two phrases mind body versus body mind and then i i want to bring this conversation to a close and then next in the second one talk about specific examples okay um but um one of the things that that john talks about in this podcast and i'll put a link to the podcast because i really think it's worth listening to for anybody Mm -hmm. um, is that if you're using your thinking to affect your physical self, you, um, that's pretty quick. You're using the nervous system. Uh, the thoughts are going through your body pretty quickly. It, it's not instantaneous, but it's pretty fast. It takes a second or two for something to travel from your brain down to your feet, something of that order of magnitude. It's quick. It's a quick thing quicker than a second <laughs> mm, maybe I think just the time it takes for stuff to get down through mm. the nerves is, it, it's not zero it's mm -hmm. right it's quick it's pretty quick on the other hand when you change something physical in order to improve the whole thing the body and the mind that um the effects of that are quite a bit slower takes more time and because it's more if the if the thinking nervous system affecting the body is almost kind of an electrical thing akin to an electrical mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. the other is more like a chemical reaction it's slower it takes time to really come into effect and it, it, it has a it has a different speed and um but doesn't mean but can you give an example of yeah, an uh, because example from our work would be yeah. which i want to talk it's an example that i want to talk about more in the next podcast but constructive rest most teachers will say 
it's probably a good idea if you can to do it for at least 15 minutes or so maybe you'll get you'll get some benefits from doing do it every day <laughs> do it yeah do it every day and it takes a certain amount of time for you putting yourself in a different position than you would ever normally be for quite a period of time 15 15 minutes say uh, it takes so it takes that amount of time or some amount of time to really reap the full benefits from it so you don't you know I could think a, a direction a self-direction like I'm free or my neck is free and pretty quickly my body will respond but I, if I put myself in a position that encourages that kind of freedom um it's going to take a little longer there's a um I get it's what you're saying um I'm just thinking plan. about um sorry I'm just thinking about the direction is much more fleeting temporary situation it, it's you get a a, a a benefit you get the effect quickly but it also goes quickly and then you right? need to reintroduce it's, so it's not it. like you can think this yeah. direction once and you're good to go the rest of your no, life definitely not. No. <laughs> no. Um, um so um but the um my the other point that we were talking about before we started the podcast is um uh, i i agree that with that sort of physical change and freedom that's a slower for example with constructive rest mm -hmm. um but you could also say that anything in your nervous system that's happening or in your whole body that's happening in your subconscious mm -hmm. um affects what you actually do think and it's 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 the precursor to conscious thought and it's it's very fast yeah, indeed <laughs> because so, you're connecting within the nervous system itself yeah, so that's an example of it the body to mind if you want to use it those terms of that direction being super duper fast <laughs> um, um. right and and for example why would you even bother thinking a direction if everything seems fine but if you if you're if you get if your brain gets some signals that things aren't things aren't optimal and that causes you to think oh well, I think I'll use an yeah. direction that's an instantaneous um yeah that's that way yeah much instantaneous process mm -hmm. And, and related to that, um, just, and again, I don't want to go too deeply into this right now, but that one of the implications of these two pathways, the sort of electrical and the chemical, you might say, are that it's going to be really helpful if you are working with a student or working on your own and using, say, the mental side of things to also do some actual physical movement because that's going to give that kind of feedback that, that's going to allow both those two systems to work together which is obviously how we're designed to be I think so I mean they're obviously your... working together all the time whether you're overtly well, or subconscious together and you um, want to make them work together better, um, but there's something about the movement that can help it be more obvious and, and right and someone um, a teacher that uh, I refer to a lot Marge Marge Barstow I mean she might work with someone sitting in a chair get helping them uh release tension in their neck and shoulders and so on and she could she had amazing hands and she could do a great job of that but very often she would then say now why don't you just move forward a little bit mm -hmm. with this not even get out of the chair but just mm -hmm. do some movement including the, this with this new way of being mm -hmm. because that's really how you're going to ground it in your body that's how you maybe sense it more and and experience it more exactly. consciously yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's all I want to say about this but in the next podcast I want to talk about specific examples but do you have anything you want to say 
before we close um, um uh, just that um, because of i knew we were having this conversation i just played a little bit and just thinking the word body mind to myself and mind body to myself Mm -hmm. um just lightly a few times mm -hmm. and i notice a difference in how i respond and it seems connected to this idea of direction body to to i mean there's no two but it's sort of a body to mind mind to body mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm noticing that i'm gesturing up for one of them and down for another one so it's interesting yeah. so yeah. And, and that's know. something actually in, in uh, John's podcast, he said, he says, well, I'm going to, I'm after talking about it, says, it might be interesting to spend a day or two just thinking uh, in terms of um, physical, uh, mm -hmm. physical psycho or body or mind, body yeah, mind, mm -hmm. just that, that, that that's what I'm interested in right now or something like that. Mm -hmm. And does that do anything different that's it's an interesting question I well mean, for me i thought i noticed so i'd be interested to see what our viewers and listeners notice yeah absolutely so. mm -hmm. uh, i think i think i can speak for you on this that we really mm -hmm. would like feedback on this because honestly i don't think this whole question has been all that much uh discussed in the Alexander world. So a lot of it's kind of new to me anyway, and I've been teaching forever. And, and <laughs> so anyway, so we'll end this conversation, but uh, there's another one that will be coming up soon. So uh, Imogen, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, my guest uh, is Imogen Ragone, an Alexander teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll be putting a link to that quote. I'll, I'll have that quote from Alexander. I'll have the link to the podcast that we're talking about, the earlier podcast with John Macy. And then we're going to move on in the next part, part two of this series, to um, some examples of what the, of what we're talking about. So thank you. Thank you.